good afternoon respected chairpersons my esteemed colleagues definitions so the definition for the two important words in that topic what is a fontan fontan or fontan cruiser operation refers to any operation that results in the flow of systemic venous blood to the lungs without passing through a ventricle what is single ventricle physiology single ventricle physiology exists when there is impossibility or inadvisability of surgically reconstructing a functional two ventricle heart with the separated in series pulmonary and systemic circulation when it is inadvisable it is inadvisable when other morphological features precludes a biventricular repair they are marked straddling of the av valves dorv with uncommitted vsd common ventricle with rudimentary p i call dr rv kumar to be chairperson please rudimentary ivs in all these three situations the both the ventricles are well developed but it is inadvisable to do it is inadvisable because the overall procedure to achieve a biventricular repair is complex and at the end of the procedure you have a concern about the ability of the ventricle or the av valve to function optimally when it is impossible it is impossible when one of the ventricles is hypoplastic or rudimentary and we surgeons cannot be like the creator producing a ventricle with normal volume pressure relationship a univentricular heart may be a morphological left ventricle which is designed by the creator to last for a century pushing blood to the systemic circulation it could be a morphological right ventricle designed for a century to pump blood into a low pressure systemic circulation in india the common diagnosis in patients who are put on fontan pathway are the first four the last one i think only few centers do it coming to the evolution of the fontan physiology it appears to me that whenever i do it and whenever i talk to my post graduate students i say that fontan physiology is there is no physiology in it it is only pathology it is still called fontan physiology because this was never exist this sort of a circulatory system was never existent in animal kingdom during the evolution you have in fishes one atrium and one ventricle in amphibians you have two atria and one ventricle but good streaming of the blood in the ventricle even if the mixing happens in the reptiles there are two atria and one incompletely septated ventricle which allows a good streaming and the birds and the mammals have got two atria and two ventricles nowhere in the animal kingdom you have a circulation which is similar to a fontan circulation that's why the name fontan physiology the physiology created by fontan the fontan's initial operation that was done in 1968 and reported in 1971 had classical glen because that was how the glen was being done at that point of time you had a right atrial appendage connected to rpa with the homograft with the valve and there was a homograft aortic valve at ivc opening to ra so it was thought that rv is dispensable but you have to have one volume chamber and two valves the cruises procedure published in 1973 described the procedure of translocating the pulmonary trunk as in a ross operation to the right atrial appendage one year later bjork published for his identical prob problem of a tricuspid atresia with a good pulmonary artery with good valve have a anastomosis between the right atrium and the rvot using a pericardium as a roof so this circulation had one valve and one chamber then from 1973 to 14 15 years we had several forms of atrio pulmonary connections atria being connected to the pulmonary artery the pulmonary circulation having no valves but one volume chamber even in the 
Fontan and the Chess Criteria, published in 1977, they said normal RA volume is necessary for, for a Fontan circulation to function. And of course, the PVR less than 4 wood units per meter square and the mean PAP less than 15 millimeters of mercury and a ventricular EF more than 60 even holds good now. But even this normal RV, uh, RA volume was dispensed with the publication by Dilleval, who described a variety of TCPC, the lateral tunnel, the bidirectional gland. At that time, bidirectional gland was being practiced, not the classical then. So he did the bidirectional gland, and through a lateral tunnel, IVC blood was diverted to the pulmonary artery. So this pulmonary circulation has half of right atrium a volume chamber. Fenestration was added as a modification of this procedure by Lax in 1988, adjustable, 1990 bridges, fixed, the fixed means you have the fenestration in all and then subsequently, if required, you close it with the catheter te based techniques. Then in 1991, Marcelletti described the extra cardiac fonta. Here, you have a BDG, IVC is disconnected from the RA and connected by a prosthetic tube to the RPA outside the heart, a procedure which anybody can do so far as he knows when not to do it. When not to do it, you should know the Fontan principle. There are so many advantages of the extra cardiac Fontan. The students are expected to write the, these things, even if there are some repetitions. One most important thing is it optimizes the lap, laminar flow. The visitor go is maintained throughout the pulmonary circulation. There is no loss of energy in any chamber. So what is this Fontan's principle? The Fontan principle is there is no pumping chamber in the systemic venous circulation. Pulmonary flow is maintained by a transpulmonary gradient. A low LVEDP and a transpulmonary gradient provide the pressure differential for pulmonary blood flow. To, for this to work, you have to have a ventricle which has a normal systolic and diastolic function, a ventricle which is not subjected to pressure or volume overload, a competent AV valve, and a low pulmonary vascular resistance. So far as these are there, the Fontan physiology works like a physiology. Now, coming to the second part of it, the current strategies in the management of a single ventricle physiology. Single ventricle physiology, at present, to the, in, when it is put on a Fontan pathway, it will have three stages. If the patient is symptomatic at neonate, patient will have an initial surgical palliation in the neonatal period, or up to two, about two to three months. The goal in this stage is to achieve a well-balanced pulmonary and systemic circulation with controlled pulmonary blood flow. Goal number two, unobstructed slip, uh, systemic blood flow. If there is any obstruction to the systemic blood flow, it has to be tackled at this stage. And you ha should have an unobstructed pulmonary and systemic venous return. Supposing there is a TAP, we say, address it now. It may be when you are opening the heart, if there is an un uh, you achieve an unrestricted atrial level mixing of the venous return. This may be done in the second stage. Also, if you are doing a initial palliative position, uh, palliation as a stent procedure. These goals are achieved generally by a BT shunt whenever the cyanosis is severe. Severe cyanosis means less than 70%, usually done between in the neonatal and three months of age, or a PA banding usually with the onset of the symptoms of volume overload on the ventricle. So that may be at the time of two to four months it may be required. Then the stage two palliation, this is the first stage of the definitive palliation called Fontan. You do a bidirectional gland. This achieves the relief from volume load on a single ventricle while maintaining a systemic oxygen delivery. It allows a ventricular remodeling in response to the acute reduction in the volume load. Advantage of staging is that you address all other morphological problems at this stage. Supposing there is an incompetent AV valve, address it. Any other forms like a PAPVC, address it. But you are preparing the patient for a future font term. When to do the stage two? As soon as it is safe to do. 
textbook wise 10 to 12 weeks, but we generally do it at five to six months. Now about hemifontan. Hemifontan at the time of stage two, I have never done. Don't do it. Your cardiologist may ask you to do it. Please don't do it. Now, second problem is, should we have an anti-grade flow during the second stage? The controversy continues. Additional flow may be in the form of retaining a beatition or anti-grade flow through a bandit or a synotic native pulmonary valve. Potential benefit of this is higher O2 saturation, improved pulmonary arterial growth, lowering of PVR due to salutary effect of pulsatile blood flow. But persistent volume overload on the single ventricle and higher gland pressure negates all benefits. Now the stage three, that is the second stage of the definitive palliation. Currently, nearly all Fontan procedures are performed as TCPCs, that is lateral tunnel or extracardiac. The advantage of extracardiac, I told you, the disadvantage of the lateral tunnel will be you are having right atrium, a portion of the right atrium, you can have sinus node dysfunction, and atrial er dyserythmias are associated with the segment of atrial wall exposed to higher systemic venous pressure causes atrial dyserythmia and that is not good for the hemodynamics. And the only advantage of this doing a lateral tunnel is a potential pathway for growth, hence it enables an early font turn. When you are doing a extra cardiac, you have to wait until you can put at least 20 mm tube graft. The adult size of IVC is 23, you have to at least put 20. Supposing you want to relieve the volume overload earlier, you want to, our patient has become systematic, is a symptomatic, patient has developed collaterals, you may have to do it early. You can't wait until four or five years, then you do a lateral tunnel at, let's say, two, two and a half months. Now, fenestration. This is the only thing, you know, which has undergone a, 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 a prospective randomized trial. There's only one trial which says that fenestration is good. In extracardiac fontan, fenestration can be achieved by a side-to-side -side anastomosis or an interposition grafting. That is, that's how the interposition graft, that's how I do it. Fenestration improves clinical outcomes. It, Decreases the incidence of prolonged postoperative efficiency, reduces the postoperative length of hospital stay, lessens the need for early reinterventions. Long term complications of Fontan. So, all the problems are related to chronically elevated systemic venous pressure. All problems are related to chronic low cardiac output status. Whatever the problems I have enumerated, they have got the basis of these two problems. Now, future. Future is a stage four Fontan. Jackis has proposed a right-sided subpulmonary ventricular assist device as a destination therapy in all Fontans. Maybe that is the future wherein all these patients under, uh, have a subpulmonary ventricle. In evolution, this is what Octopus had. Octopus has got a central heart, two peripheral hearts, two peripheral hearts, pumping blood to the gills. Thank you very much. That is the further reading.